What's going on YouTube? Thank you for stopping in for another video today. Before we get started, let's do a little bit of a, a shop tour and see what all is going on here at MDDP. So this 2010 Cummins came in for a head gasket. Uh, we're also doing diff covers on it. I believe an Edge CTS-3, a couple other things. But right now the head is out of it. So just straight down to the block. Pistons there. Next step is to get this all um, prepped, get the block nice and smooth, everything cleaned off of there. And over here is the head. So this is actually getting sent off to the machine shop. They'll, they'll go ahead underneath and then uh, machine to make sure it's completely flat underneath of there where it's going to make the two surfaces together between the head and the block. And then right now we just have it all pretty much the oil sucked out of it. Just a little bit of cleanup before we send it off to them. This LBZ we just wrapped up. Jordan did a lot of the front end work. Um, all the stuff you see red is going to be all the things that were done. And then also what you can't see is the center link right there is a ppe center link it's real thick if you guys missed it in the very first video we went ahead and we picked this excavator up so this video up here will cover us going to get the excavator loading it which was one heck of a time if you want to know how to load and unload in a almost 12,000 pound piece of machinery that the tracks will not move on that's a good video to check out how to figure that out if we even did it the right way i don't know but it worked so long story short is this machine was very cheap and that's why i purchased it because the engine is behind you guys in about 100 pieces right now so let's go ahead and show you what all we have i tried to organize this in terms of everything on this table being a lot of the bottom end stuff and then everything on this table to the right being more the top end accessory drive things that are kind of on the outside of the engine or top in terms of the engine itself here we have the top and then for, which is the head and then we have the actual block itself and that block is 100 percent nothing in it but pretty much the uh bearing caps and also the bolts for those and the, the people that took this apart, I thank them very much for putting the bolts back into places they go because that helps me out a ton. There's already a, a lot of bolts to figure out and go by, but um, definitely intimidating to look at that and know it's just got to end up somewhere on here. But a lot of that stuff you figure out as you go along. Two of the injectors are stuck in here and uh, the way they kind of made it sound is that's not something I want to try and pry out of there. So we'll just work around this and then eventually, you know, they, they head back in there anyways. And I believe these kind of look like injector keepers off the top of my head. I don't know if somehow they go in and grab maybe the other way around. Oh, there we go. That would make sense somehow, maybe around that line. I don't know, once again, a lot of things we'll have to, uh, oh, it has a, has a heel to it. A lot of things there is to figure out about this. And I mean, it's not something we'll figure out overnight. Oh, yep, exactly. That thing will slide right in there. So as you take parts, and put them together it, it starts to make sense so this is extremely overwhelming to see this many parts that you didn't take off and that's the biggest thing we took none of this stuff off it's just it came in totes and then i just kind of laid it out and tried to organize it so we got head bolts push rods timing gears off for the uh, front cover these are the old main bearings rod bearings and you can see this piston i believe is the one that actually spun the rod bearing that's why you see such bearing material on there and that is the spot it was on right there. So where it's supposed to be nice, shiny, and polished like that, you have all this bearing material. So the one thing I do need to purchase that I do not have is a new rod. So I don't think you can do anything about that. And then also I need to get the crank polished. I try to, I'm gonna try and avoid having to buy a whole new crank. This is around like the five to seven hundred dollar price range, depending on what Chinese eBay place you end up at. Accessory, we have the water pump right here, fuel filter housing, front cover injection pump which is actually a pretty meaty injection pump and there's a lot of fittings coming off of this thing so we'll, we'll have to figure out where all that stuff goes some type of breather um these are the kind of weird things that i don't really know what's what's going on with that we'll figure that out this as well kind of looks like an oil pump but i really have no clue so shop manual will be coming in clutch for this and i will say if i did not have this shop manual i probably would not even attempt this project because that thing has everything down to the specs down to the torque sequence, down to where these parts all go, exploded diagrams, which sounds like extremely boring and nerdy, but that is absolute gold to putting something like this back together. Now, today's objective in this video is to go ahead and try and get all this stuff clean. We have a engine right here that's pretty dirty. We wanna make sure when assembling an engine, everything is 100% clean. And granted, this stuff was all just thrown into a dirty bin. We wanna make sure it's all clean because if you look real close at all that, you can just see the amount of dirt and grime on all these gears when it's all up close and that would not make for a long life of an engine.
Now, unfortunately at the shop, we do not have a parts washer yet. It's on the list. It's definitely on a list of things to get, but as you guys know, that list is ever growing and that's not the highest thing on there right now. So this is our makeshift parts washer for the meantime. I took a bunch of this degreaser here. They call it Super Blue Plus and it's, I mean, it is a very aggressive degreaser. Obviously it's heavily diluted now, but uh, you can still see a blue tint to the water. So there's still a good bit in there. We're just gonna throw everything in here and then probably use some type of brush here, something like this, it's real aggressive. And then just scrub all these guys one by one. You can even see it's already lifting some oil to the surface there. So I'm gonna set you guys up and we're gonna get the cleaning. That was a lot of scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing. You can probably see in the time lapse, I've yet to see it. It probably like gets dirtier and dirtier the water as we go. But there is our absolute mess. And then this was the clean one. So we would dirty things up, you know, get it all clean as it could be. And then this is kind of like a rinse off one. And even from the rinse off, you can see all the oil and everything. And uh, I guess we forgot these. So good thing I came back here. We got the oil cap there. So you guys can see the parts now. This was the before. So you can see all the dirty, just grease, oil, and the worst part was all that dirt inside of it. Now everything is all cleaned up. You can actually read the label on this thing, which is super nice. And then you saw us oil all this because a lot of this is just bare steel. So things like that would instantly start rusting. In some spots, you can even see like on the inside of this lip right here where water was sitting, starting to get a little bit of rust forming in there. So it's good to get a nice little coat of oil on it. All this will get assembly lube where it's necessary when we put everything back together, but just to keep it from rusting for the time's sake, even down to these head bolts here we got that all cleaned up and these we have new pistons for so we're not gonna worry about that we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get to it a few weeks later here we had some parts show up first thing being the crank this one it was deemed unrepairable because this bearing right here that was spun and um granted they probably could have got that material off but they were told at least i was told by the machine shop is anytime a little four cylinder spins a bearing on this main or rod it's likely going to generate enough heat to actually warp this thing so it wasn't worth putting the money into to find out it was warped in the end so we got a whole new brain one unfortunately this thing was only really available through china and that's kind of the quickest way to get them right now unfortunately you go to yanmar kamatsu you're going to be waiting a while and paying an astronomical uh weight and also price so the only difference was if i can get it off this gear right here this used to be on the new crankshaft and i'm looking at this and I'm seeing a difference right there. So I actually posted on my Instagram story. And I'm not trying to make this a plug, but if you guys do kind of want to follow this build a little closer or the other truck builds, I post a lot of stuff on my Instagram story. That's a tag there to check it out. It just basically more things that don't really get put to YouTube, but still small, interesting things that people like to see. Anyways, where I'm headed with that is I posted on there if anyone knew um, what might be the reason for that gear being like that. And it turns out the reason is right here is actually the oil pump. And I did not know that. So we're definitely going to take this apart and get it all cleaned out. But that flat spot right there will ride on that flat spot right there. Because you can see by that wear mark, there's been something riding on there. And that's exactly what it is. So got that gear swapped over to here. Now we just have this one that was on the old or the, the new gear that now was going to head on to the old shaft. And the machine shop that took this off now granted i wasn't going to touch this because i know that i'm trying to find this gear let alone finding let alone buying one and getting it here at some point in time is near impossible with the whole covid thing going on with parts and everything so i just took it to them let them do it and he said it was the absolute hardest gear he's ever had to take off of a crankshaft in probably 40 years so i don't know why this thing maybe it just got so hot i really had no clue stuff that came in we got some assembly lube because that's what we need to make this thing all come together and stay together uh we also got a little brush here this is a four and a half inch ultra finished soft tone so this is going to be used to hone out the cylinder walls as like a little final uh the, the way it was described to me as when these pistons are seating themselves and after you just use the uh the ball hone that's like a 230 grit i believe it leaves a little rough marks and these piston rings have to you know clear that rough mark over time so the theory behind this basically rough brush is it's going to take away those those high spots the ridges and the uh, cylinder walls and make um the, the uh, new cylinder rings last a little bit longer than they would having to wear through what this would do next up we have ourselves a manual this is going to be absolute gold to going ahead and getting this thing figured out how to put together i probably honestly would not even attempt this without having this manual because this shows us everything from timing all that kind of stuff so we got that in and then also we got four new of these bad boys here 
we only needed one of these technically but i mean i think it's pretty stupid if you're this far into it to not get all four and i don't know i feel like maybe it'll be off balance if you don't if it's a different brand i don't know also from china but we got new bearings inside of there and then uh new bolts and everything on the bottom side of this so we have four new rods in addition to that, we actually had these for a while. I just didn't show you guys. It came with the rebuild kit. It came with the excavator. Is we have new, I believe it's to be a wrist pin. And then we have the new piston itself. So at this point in time, you put this together, this piston. And you got this guy here. And we can pretty much assemble our pistons. We got the rods. We got everything we need here. And uh, I think that's something we could finally do today. That's really been the holdup on this is parts. Um, I, I so badly just want to start to get to assembling this thing. This head isn't on there. It's just resting on there. It's a nice place to put it right now. I so badly want to just start assembling this thing, throwing it together, putting the crank in there. But I know it's right to refinish these cylinder walls. The finish was absolutely terrible, kind of glazed over. So I know I'm going to have to wait for that ball hung to get here. And then next I can use this and then... Uh, get the cylinder walls prepped because I know that little extra step will definitely be worth preserving the second life of this engine. Now, before we get too carried away with this, let's confirm that these are even the right rods. Everything should, according to the way I ordered it, uh, should be correct. But I'm noticing we have V84 on this one and TNF, there's an E there. So let's just take one of these apart. Let's choose this guy here and then we'll verify that these two are exactly the same. That way we don't do all this for absolutely nothing. All right, so we got this guy out of here. Let's see, put this together. And I'm really hoping this all lines up to be exactly the same in a nice, perfect world. Ooh, does that make me feel better? So there you can see, we're pretty much right on the money. Top and bottom, hole in the same spot. There are numbers here, but I can't, they're, they're different. I don't know what they mean. I'm not even sure what they're, what they're for, but um, that makes it feel a lot better. They look completely different inside of that cylinder. And then, you know what, let's, let's get a little more official and make sure, because looks can definitely be deceiving. All right, first we'll go with these wrist pins. She's definitely, yeah, she's definitely seen her fair share of wear. I don't think that's normal. Looking at about 20, just about 26 millimeters. We'll do millimeters here to make this easy. 26 on the old one and the new one. Perfect. Man, I'll tell you what, China, China's stepping up the quality here. Just kidding. All right, so how about piston size? Um... I don't think this is catching the full diameter, but what it catches is about 87.4. That's the new one and uh, the old one right behind me here. is about 87.7, okay. That makes me feel much, much, much better. Now here's the part that really threw me off because I'm, I, I, like I said, I've never built an engine before. That, that's the great part of this, is this is just all one big experiment and luckily it's nothing like you know, a big engine, a big Cummins, a Duramax, it's something real small and uh, not making a ton of horsepower. So we'll have room, a little bit of room for air. I never like any, but in this case, we'll have some. So these are the liners it came with and it came with these pistons, obviously. Now these pistons for the life do not fit into this liner, I understand you know, it's a machine, it's supposed to be tight fit, but they, they do not fit in there. And you look at the surface finish on the inside of that, if you guys can see, it is nothing great like the outside, it's much better. What I found is, I guess, this is for if your cylinder walls are like absolutely like annihilated, you can put these in there, but once you put these in there, then you gotta get this machined out and go through that process. This is just like a starting point. So, given that this is what came out, this is the same size of it. This is gonna replace this. I, that, that's gonna be my theory on this. They look pretty much identical, except for the uh, the bowl looks a little bit different. Not sure the reasoning, but that's what we got. Long story short, we will not be using these liners that came with the rebuild kit because there's a lot more machine work and time and money involved into using these.
Now that we know everything fits, everything's gonna be uh, nice and tidy. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pretty much get to assembling this. Well, all these went together except for two of them. Two of them did, everything worked out pretty pretty even there and nice fit with the, uh, I believe that's the wrist pin going through the uh, piston. So those two, for some reason, they were super tight. Like it would not fit through there, even trying to persuade it with the hammer a little bit, it didn't want to go. So uh, Jordan had the idea to throw those in the freezer. Hopefully they'll shrink enough that we can just slip them through there tomorrow. We labeled them because I believe these are weighed out. They actually have different diameters on each other. But the next step is we want to get to the oil pump while we're waiting on that. Um, I never knew this was behind here. This thing got soaked and completely, you know, degreased in that video you saw there. So we want to see what's behind here and what kind of sludge, because this, I know these aren't supposed to move super free, but it's a little hard to move. So we'll, we'll see what's behind there and clean it out. And we couldn't get these out by hand because you can't really put enough pressure into it. So Here's a good tip, use a impact driver. So you can get your, you can get your weight on it get down pressure and bump them right out versus trying to use just like a regular screwdriver i was having trouble as we've all been there these things just like to slip their way out and there we have our gear for the oil pump so we got the oil pump all cleaned up and also on the inside brake cleaner through the inlet and outlet ports there but the next thing is to get this seal out while we're here. Now's the time to do it. Next day here, these things had a chance to sit in the freezer overnight. You can see they're starting to get a little condensation on them. So while they're still cold, we're gonna try this theory out here and um, we labeled them because they're different sizes. I think they're weighed different. I could be wrong. The piston and the wrist pin are weighed together. So the one goes with that. Let's try, uh, let's try number two and get this guy in here. This one started. That is very good. We can never even get that far. One I think was a really tough one. So let me start that as that thing starts to cool down as well. I didn't get the one piston on video, but what ended up working, and I ran out of time filming, is heat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this piston up, because uh, as you can see, this is now stuck in there now that the, um, the pin has warmed up, so they're both the same temperature and both expanded. So I'm gonna heat the piston up, which is aluminum. So hopefully this will uh, kind of take more of the heat. In theory, I guess the steel will, but um, this seemed to work the best. Let's give it a shot. Now look at that, the thing will slide right down into there. If I can get it to do it again. There we go. All right, now there is a direction to this. So I look at the, there's a little ML right here and I go off of the ones I've already done, which is going off of the old one. Gotta hurry up before this heats up again, or cools down. So ML to the left, letters on the rod facing up. Now, I don't know if the letters matter, but I'm like I said, I'm just following what the uh, original one had. So we'll take some assembly lube, put it all up in here. Gonna be gracious with this stuff because uh, I'm not gonna have to do this twice. I don't wanna have to do this twice. So like we said, letters up. All right, like so. Line everything up here. Comes right down through. Now I'll take my two clips. They gave us two new clips here with each piston. Little C clips, take them. And I'll tell you what, these are an excellent pair it's a Lang set. I'll show you the set. It's great for uh, snap rings because it seems like every single snap ring likes its own separate pair of pliers. So we'll get that side in, flip this over. I have this little punch to knock us down a little bit because it's hot. I don't want to touch it. Second snap ring into the pliers they go. And then we can go ahead and drop this right down into there. And just like that, folks, we have an, a, a very hot <laughs> assembled piston. So that's gonna be the first step. The next step is gonna be messing with the rings 
which um, as you can see on the new one versus the old one, there's gonna be three sets of rings there. I'm not sure the job of all of them, but there's very specific directions on which way the rings face and all that. So let's uh, I guess get into that next. And I'll let this cool down so I don't burn my hand. The snap ring pliers set I was telling you guys about from Lang. This is the full set of it here. So these are huge, but those are really helpful like Allison snap rings inside the transmission. Each one of these comes with their own little set of different tips. So for different applications, it just happened to be that this one worked great for us. So we'll put this one back in its home and uh, we'll probably need something like one of the, I think it's probably gonna be the best option. Something like this will be a little too, little too flat for us and wide in the bottom. So we'll probably run with this and then um, that's what we're gonna use to put our piston rings on. There is certainly a specific way, like I was saying, to put these piston rings onto the actual piston. There's three of them. Uh, one of them we call an oiling ring. I'm gonna assume it's this one, could be 100% wrong. But the way they say to do this is a 120 degrees opposite of each other. So the oil ring joint right there, and then top ring joint over here, second ring joint over there. Now, I can't really go off these pistons. I don't know if they moved over time, if that's what they do, or just from moving them around from this assembly, they changed up their uh, locations. But you can see this one has the oil ring joint right here, and then the top one's over there. So that's not what they say to do here. And also in the other case, that one's all completely different, but at least we know that the oil rings on the bottom, top second ring up there. I did see, now actually looking through this, I didn't even think they would have anything about the, um, the, what we, the assembly we just did right there between the piston and the rod, but they do say to have the ID marks opposite. So you have an ID mark right there, which I'm surprised trying to put on there. And then the other ID mark is on the other side right there. So blank and blank, and then the opposite side. So following this, there, there is a rhyme to the reason. Definitely um, quite a few things here that I wouldn't think of, but apparently it's, it's rules, and I'm sure there are so many other rules beyond this in terms of you know little things to make the engine last a little bit longer. So like I said in the last video, if there's anything in this video that you're like, hey, I'm an engine builder and you should have done blah, 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 blah. Like, don't feel bad at all. Please let me know, especially if you know what you're talking about. That's greatly appreciated because like I said, this is a learning experience. It kind of sucks that I find out after it's already in there and it's already said and done, but at least it'll be good to know for the next instance. And that would be the last piston, number four. So the way I interpreted this oil joint thing in the beginning was, was wrong. I, I read this over about 6,000 times. It says, the coil expander joint shall be opposite of the oil ring joint. So expander ring joint, oil ring joint. And I kind of thought this through again. And um, what I believe they meant, I could be wrong, but what I believe they meant is this this coil here is it's just one, it, we'll draw this out. It's just one little coil. And at the end, it has a split here, and there's a wire that goes through it to keep this from ever just blowing out. So what I believe they meant is they want that joint of the coil here, and then they want this opening, this guy right here, on this side. So that's what I did, and I kind of drew these all out. So oil is going to be always right here on all these. Rhyme or reason to it, I don't know. Um, let me guys let, let me know what you guys think about that. And then my first ring goes here, second ring right there. So we're, we're at 120 every way, every direction here. And uh, when these go back in, I'm sure this is gonna move a lot. So we just kind of have them loosely fitted in there for now. And then eventually we'll put a compressor and stick them in the, uh, the block. This right here is another accomplishment. That right there marks the rods. The piston rings being done, that means the pistons are fully assembled. I forgot to video this, but this thing was all dented up. There's actually a huge dent right here. I don't know how that even happens, whether it was coming out or whether it was in the machine or what. But got that taken out and hammered it out and then also put a coat of paint on here to stop some areas from rusting and kind of see the areas where it's a little scaly. So that should be all set. We have our pistons over here ready to go once the time has come or once the time comes to install them. All of them are marked right up top, ready for installation. So the next step after this is going to be starting the install of getting the block prepped, getting everything ready to go, and then actual part assembly on the engine. Time to bring our attention to this engine block and head. Originally, I was not planning on washing this down. I figured, ah, you know what, it's, you know, the outside of it, what's it matter? 
But I do want to at least clean this head up, especially seeing the amount of uh, metal shavings and sludge in the oil pan. So got the two injectors. These two would not come out, they said. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to about to break two of these for no reason. So take the word on that. Put two new little caps on them. Same with on the feed and returns. So we're going to go ahead and just get to scrubbing this thing down. Those little uh, caps and plugs, I never thought I'd use those little guys there. Let me tell you, these sets here, these little caps and plugs, these are actually made for powder coating. This set right here with the little rubber ones, but these come in super handy for all kinds of jobs. I'd say 75% of jobs are using one of these kits. So they go down the, these tiny little guys here all the way up to these guys here. And I believe these are good for like 600 degrees or anything like that. So, so far, haven't had an issue with that. And then the original set we have is these plugs. Or uh, I forget what they call it. I think they still call these caps as well. But they're, they're numbered sizes. Um, I believe I got this off eBay. Just some seller puts this together and, you know, throws a kit and throws it all as one. But the little uh, red things are all made in Erie PA. So cool to kind of see stuff like that still made in the good old U.S. of A. Now that we have a nice clean block to work with, I mean, no, that wasn't 100% necessary. And like I said, I wasn't gonna do it, but I figured you were gonna be working around this thing a lot and uh, installing all these parts. You know, I don't wanna have dirt stuck in between here, bolts get loose, stupid stuff like that. So I think it was worth the uh, hour or so spent on it. Now is to attack this side of it. I think I'm just gonna put a pan underneath here, break clean down in there, get all this old nasty oil. Like I said, I wouldn't care so much about just old oil being inside a motor. It's gonna get oil in it, obviously. But there was a ton of metal shavings and bearing material in that oil pan. Plus, this oil looks like it was changed in 1903. So we want to make sure we get all this sludge and stuff out of here and just have a nice, clean, fresh start to this. The head here looks really good. It cleaned up a ton. I'm, I'm glad to see all that sludge and everything made its way out of there. I just used a degreaser and kind of scrubbed it around with my finger and a rag and got it in all the places. I'll uh, next put oil on this. You can even see that's crazy. It's already starting to uh, surface rust on all these bare metal spots so i'll just dab some oil over all this and mist it to make sure that uh doesn't keep on spreading on to something serious then after that we will go ahead and move to prepping the head that's just going to take a series of scrapers different tools to get all that material off there the old bearing materials soot stuff like that so time to start cleaning again Time has come where we are ready to hone out the cylinders, which will give them more crosshatch. What that little basically scratches do is it holds the oil when the piston goes up and down. As you guys saw, that little ring we put on the piston was specifically for that exact reason. So when they're real shiny like that, that means they are glazed over and they don't really hold the oil well at all. So what we're gonna do is follow the manual here for our honing tool. They say you want 50% diesel, 50% oil, and then that will make a honing fluid. So that's exactly what we have here. I'll shake it up real good. That's uh, red diesel in there. 1540 mobile Delvac, 50-50. Actually, I went a little heavier on the oil just, just in case. And then let's see. After that, they say to pull it up and down. And I'm assuming the 30 to 40 degrees. At first, I thought it was the angle you hold your drill at. I do not believe that's it. We think it's like how fast you pull it out. So if you pulled it out real quick while it was spinning, your, your cross has to be real steep. If you went real slow, your cross has to be almost like a you know, straight line. So we'll have to play with it at first and then uh, figure out what exact speed you need to pull it in and up at. Also, they say 300 to 1200 RPMs. That's a huge gap on the box. It says 500 to 800. So we found what the drill is at 500 RPMs on the Milwaukee and that's what we'll use. Um, they say to use straight oil. I guess we're just going to kind of go by the engine manual. And then the amount of strokes we won't be able to count. So we'll just go by the seconds. They say 20 to 45. And the manual here, I believe it's set around 30 seconds somewhere. About how long to, uh, to run it up and down. So we'll learn as we go. And I'm sure we'll do some stuff wrong. But that's why we're doing it on this and not something else. There is the finished product of the honing brush. You can kind of see how it took off some of that. I mean, it's basically sanding away. That's what it's doing. And the first one, as you saw, we had to learn with, which would be 
this guy right here and then we kind of figured out what uh what speed to go at to be able to actually get a nice cross hatch and i am super thrilled with that finish right there that is much more i mean way better than i would have thought we would have got for the first time now the second brush we're going to use is this guy right here or sorry second tool we're going to use is this brush um, the way this was described to me is there's little ridges. So you can picture as this gets sanded, there's little ridges between all the little sanding marks. So the point of this is for the uh, the little ridges to get knocked down versus the piston would wear it down over time, but obviously your piston's gonna take a toll. So we'll use that brush to take a toll on it and then kind of knock down those high spots on here to make it just a little more smooth. Cause I, I can't remember the, uh, the grit of this brush. Um, the, I, the engine building place basically sold it to me, asked them which one to do. I want to say this one is a, it's, it's somewhere around 120, I want to say. Maybe just a touch finer than that, I'm not sure. Next up, we'll hit that. They say, use your honing oil, and they say 18 strokes per cylinder. So we'll hit that, and then these will be all shined up. Unfortunately, we're getting the block all dirty, but I'd rather have some nice cylinder walls. We went to make some progress on this yesterday and unfortunately we did not because we found out the first thing we needed to do before we were even ready to drop the crank in which was what we thought we were going to do is we're like well we should probably you know get the, get the uh, cam in here and the, but then we thought about it we realized there was the still bearing in the end here and um wanted to change them kind of was like iffy about it but then we realized the other two were missing back in here so i'm not sure how it came out but anyways needless to say that we got this one out we just knocked it out um now we're kind of in the process of figuring out how we're going to get the rest of them in there this one back here is going to be the first one i had to buy this tool and that's what that's what got us held up is this will go on the end here to center us up and we'll hit the back one in and then we'll kind of work our way toward the end here i believe probably the right way to do it would be coming from the other side hitting this one in you know reverse so you have your end hole to stabilize you for this hole but there's a plug back here and I can't find anything on the manual about it. It kind of seems like it's pressed in there pretty darn tight from both sides. And seeing how parts are and everything right now, it's not something I really want to get into is trying to find one of these and source one of these and if, you know, which way it comes out and all that. So seeing how easily these slid in and out, we'll see and uh, kind of get a game plan. For when I tell you this is our first time building an engine, I am absolutely not lying at all. Case in point, we probably just fought with this for probably about an hour and what's misleading is they give you three bearings so you can definitely see the wear on this one in my hand versus the one on the table just because this one's obviously the one that came out of there we got it out so they give you three bearings and there's three holes one machine hole second machine hole right there and then the third machine hole last one right here that had the bearing in it that was stuck in there we're trying to figure out how did they get the uh, camshaft out with it you know out taking out this bearing but getting the other two out well, come to find out after lots of measuring trials, tribulations, trying to make custom, you know, drivers and everything that there is only one cam bearing. Why this came with three, I have no clue, but this guy is the only one that receives one of these. Um, measuring down in the millimeter, this diameter is literally what these are. So you're trying to put something in the same hole. It's just not going to happen. And then we took the cam measuring these two and it's exactly fits perfectly in the hole, which would explain why these have little oil galleys in them but this one does not because obviously it sees the most load being on the end there so glad to see we wasted an hour but we found out what we need to do just get one in here and not worry about the rest we actually made a burr here but getting it all cleaned up shouldn't have any problems now with that Now we've reached the point where things are getting pretty technical. We gotta make sure everything is nice and clean when going back together. And my extent of knowledge is pretty well out the door minus what we've been learning through the manual here. So the next step for us is bearings, main bearings and rod bearings. We have our mains right here, rods right here, mains because they have these two little oil holes that are going to line up with those two right there. We got this all nice and clean. Pretty much from here, it's just gonna be dropping this stuff into here. And then on the very end, we have two sets of these not sure if these are each different thicknesses. I haven't figured that out yet, but these will set in the end and that'll kind of give us the uh, crank end play. 
So these little guys will sit down in like this on this very end cap, right like that. So next up, clean things, drop it in, and we're gonna put you guys on a nice little time lapse. Well, boys, she is in there. Big moment here. We have a rotating crank that is not stuck, does not have the end play that's excessive, and uh, everything seems to be A-OK -okay with things so far. So everything has been working out well. The directions have been great. I honestly would not even attempt this, like I said, 100 times without this. There's just so much useful information inside of there that you get. It's not just like common knowledge. You look this stuff up. But everything looks good so far. The next step is going to be rod bearings and that means the pistons are going to be entering the uh, cylinder here or entering the block so i'm really excited that this is in moving nice and free we were just saying this assembly lube it's it is wild stuff the, the way it still allows us to move like grease or like oil but it sticks like grease you know that's that's his job is to stay there till it gets some actual oil flow to it now time to plug away at these guys now we can get to use these fine babies here we'll grab the first one to my knowledge, it's not going to make a difference where exactly these go in terms of one, two, three, four. But there is a position they have to follow. If you remember that little ID mark, which is the one right there, this one says ML. You can see right there it says ML. That is going to show the position in which this stays. So they say the ID mark is going to be away from the camshaft side. This being the camshaft right here, that means the ID mark where it says ML is going to be on that side. And that's because there is a little bit of offset two you can see that the bowl in the center of the piston it's kind of offset a little bit and that's i'm assuming for the reason of where the uh, fuel injectors are on the head so we'll get these put in using the rain compressor never use one of these so it's going to be pretty interesting i'm sure it'll be a uh, learning process how to get this in here smoothly because these rings were not easy to work with Number two big moment of the day is we have a rotating assembly of pistons, a crank. Everything is running nice and smooth so far. Better knock on a piece of wood because we know that's uh, going to go south if I don't. So really happy to see this. As I've said before, I'm ecstatic that we've made it um, this far and everything's working out well between, you know, there's no guessing work. Everything's in the directions of what we need. I guess uh, we got to start looking in the book of what the next step is. To move forward on this thing because there's so many different avenues you can take and i don't want to have the problem where like say we we put something on the crank here but really you know two steps later we find out someone's supposed to be behind that so we'll make sure we read everything five times over and uh don't repeat ourselves too many times after checking this out this is all the drivetrain components i think we're going to complete the whole drivetrain assembly and then we'll put this cover on and then we'll move to accessories and top end stuff like a head gasket and head and all that so the first thing we're going to tackle is the camshaft. So this is still assembled, the driving gear onto this little stabilizing plate, whatever that's called, and that'll just slide right in. And then after that, we'll probably attack this idler gear and then uh, maybe the injection pump or the water pump. We'll see. Remember that part where I said, let's make sure we don't have to redo anything? Well, sure enough, the old cam had to come back out because we realized the front cover has to go on here. So we prepped this, got it all nice, ready to go. I have some silicone along the edge that I believe it was originally on. I cleaned this up previously and I don't exactly remember where it was, but to my knowledge, this is where it all needs to go after looking at it on here. You can kind of see where the line of dirtiness to clean is. So right there is the, uh, the seal line, kind of help us out a little bit. But once I get this in, I'll be able to put the cam back in. This stuff has to set for 24 hours, so that'll probably be it for today after this is in place. Just lightly torque it down, and then tomorrow we'll really 
get it all fully tightened 24 hours later. With the cover installed, that is a stopping point. And like I said, the last thing I'm gonna do is spray this thing down. This was originally that uh, honing oil mix that we made. It was diesel and oil mixed together, but now it's just straight 1540 in there. So I'm gonna just kind of spray the inside of this down because as you can see, just simply cast iron being completely like, when you spray brake cleaner, that strips every oil off of that piece of metal. So it just instantly creates surface for us and that's what's going on inside the cylinder walls on the other side as well. So we'll give that a quick mist and then uh, join back up with this thing tomorrow. Next day here, so all of our gasket maker is set up behind here about 24 hours later. We just got the cam back in here because we had to take it out, like I said, because of this plate. So we got the cam in and we also got the idler gear in as well. And this is very well marked. I really like how this is all, you know, A lines exactly up with those two little holes you can see. C lines up a C right there. And then next up is gonna be the injection pump, which is gonna sit right in this little empty cavity. And that's gonna line up with B. So it's like a kind of a fail-proof ABC way to make sure this is all nice and uh, timed properly. And it's really nice because before when we did the forklift engine, it was just a belt and you were just kind of lining things up. Granted, we didn't have a manual, but it was not easily marked like this was. There was like two or three different marks and you didn't know what was what. Now the injection pump is probably the only thing I did not clean because there are so many open cavities and areas for dirt and water to get into that I, it just was not worth it with uh, diesel and fuel injection. You do not want any little particle of dirt or water getting through your injection pump. So that being said, we got this area cleaned up here. That's this face is gonna mesh right into here. So the injection pump will hang out in this area right there. And then we have these studs and nuts on the back to hold the pump to the cover. For the pump itself, we've put together the pieces here that this is going to be the gear that will slide on. You can see a keyway in the bottom of that keyway right here. So with that being said, we can slip that guy right onto there. And we found out this gear has slots in it, which um, this is gonna be able to give us our timing. So we're gonna have to time the injection pump on, on this cover here. So the way that injection pump tilts is how the, you know, fuel is injected in there at, at what point the crank and the cam and everything is running and that's what controls your timing. So might just give her a little boost. This thing will go right onto there, as you can see. And then we'll just get it right into the motor with these four bolts. And then this little nut will cap it all off. Back a few days later here, we finally figured out how to properly time this gear to the flange right here. Actually reached out to Yanmar. I thought this was a complete like waste of time to even try. It was just a random like USA support email. And they came back with some heat of first off gear instructions. And then secondly, how to time it because inside the Komatsu manual, if I didn't mention already, Basically, see, they say don't, you know, ever, ever separate that gear, which would be this guy from the flange. They said, if you do, pretty much good luck trying to get it figured out. So luckily they sent this, the pump we have is right here and they want you to insert a little socket head, which would be, uh, Jordan has one here. This is the one we're gonna make fit. It's a little bit longer, but it's the one that we have to put in there. We tried a bolt, cause that's all we had in M5. And the problem is once this head gets behind here, then you, you can't actually use your socket head to get that thing out of there, your socket on your wrench. So instead we have one of these right here, which is one of the Allen heads, which will work good because this can sit back in there and you can kind of picture it from the other way where you'll still be able to get on this before the head of that bolt was sunk down into here to the point where you couldn't get on it with a socket, if that makes sense. So that's the plan is to line this thing up. There are threads that are right, I think tough to rotate, but right up in there, so this is pretty much what pins that injection pump at top dead center. And then the engine itself is at top dead center. All the timing marks are gonna have to align up. So all those little dots, we'll have to run it back a little bit. And then we can put our timing gear on and that way we should be at like zero timing. And that way you can advance the timing after that by sliding this injection pump you know like rotating it you can see those two marks there show us that it's at zero right now so we'll get this in here hopefully and uh get the gear on there and start actually moving along on this thing motor has done a little flip here we're checking out from the bottom side everything is good to go here we got a new crush washer in there everything is time i didn't think it was going to end up perfect but it is i mean everything lines up beautifully i didn't think we'd be able to get that with the slots that we have here now i was checking this thing out thinking okay we're ready to put a cover on here what do we want to do next so i started looking through here I'm like, yep, yep, we got this, we got that. And then I'm like, wait, the tappets, which are these guys right here, which are with the push rods. This rides on the cam. 
and then the push rod's right on that. So that way that the, the push rod doesn't ride directly on the cam. This is your little cushion in between for it to slide on. And we're looking at it thinking, how in the world are we gonna get that in there? And now uh, we've come to realize that 99.9% .9 sure that this cam has to come out. We'll drop all these down in there because it needs to be on the other side of the cam right now. So it needs to be, these need to be dropped underneath of that cam. So in this position, you shouldn't be able to see these right now, I believe. So we'll get this cam out of here nice and carefully and then go ahead and drop all these fellas right down in their little home there. But it's like we said, it's, it's a great time to catch this. There's literally only two bolts that held this thing in here. So no better time to figure this out than now. So I clean these up, get all the dirt and anything off of them. Jordan's hitting them with the old assembly lube magnet and drop them right down into their home. And they're pretty tight fit down in there so it doesn't really seat when you just drop it in there. So we got a little hammer, take the head of the hammer and then just give a little persuasion the rest of the way home. And then we'll drop assembly lube on all the tops of all those. Before I forget about this one, because I remember there's a gasket here. That's yeah, oil filter housing. I did have to buy a new nipple. I think to take this out, you kind of have to destroy it. So that's probably what they did. They just probably grabbed onto it with pliers or something. So now that we have one on the way, we can uh, install this guy in here. Jordan just made a great discovery here. So we're looking at this and he rotated it, put it up. And once this thing's on here, we start figuring out that is the oil cooler. So there's a little tooth here that lines up perfectly with it. Set this down before I drop it. That little tooth drops right down into there and it seals perfectly onto there. That threads in and then you probably just run that nut down to sandwich this down. And this lines up perfectly with that coolant line. So coolant flows through there and that's your, that's your oil cooler. So I guess I ordered one of these for nothing, $6 down the drain, but super happy we found out what that thing's for. Now that this is on, we were going to next do the, there's like a little, I guess it'd be upper oil pan, like a little spacer. And then that also that gasket back here. But unfortunately that all essentially ties into this cover and this cover can't, you know, fully be set until about 24 hours later because everything else will bolt in the bottom of it down there. So we figured a good time to start repping into the top end here. So the block is all prepped, ready to go. Head gasket placed onto there. Now that time has come to get this head all cleaned up uh, process we're going to use the scraper and we got a carbide scraper as well get a little you know finer with it and then uh, we'll run through sandpaper grits now two things to watch out for these little guys right here these would not come out they said and i'm going to take the word not pry on those injectors that's how much they pop out of the head right there they have tiny little tiny tiny holes on them and uh, easily get clogged up and then you're Cylinder's not going to work because your injector's clogged up and it can't fire. So I'm going to get to work carefully staying away from these two, getting the rest of this head prepped and ready to put on the engine. Quick recap on the process used to prep this head. Now, granted, this, this is not like a truck head. If this was a truck head on a customer truck, yes, we would take it out and get it machined and everything. But for this, we're just going to uh, get it nice and clean and then uh, send it back on to the excavator. First thing you saw me use, is this guy here is made by Titan. Just holds a little razor blades in the end. That gets your, your bulk of the material. Secondly, we came in with this tool right here, which is a carbide tip on the end of that. So that helps you dig in like you saw Jordan get in between here and it'll, it'll pick up anything that this leaves behind. And then lastly, I came in with the 400 grit sandpaper on the little sanding block here to keep everything nice and flat and then that just kind of took off the rest you could probably even see it shine up once i uh, ran over it with that making sure to stay away from those two injectors like i said and uh it's nice and smooth everything's ready to go just time to put this thing on here and start putting on the head bolts now for head bolts we are reusing the factory ones 
I honestly could not even find these online for this engine. So either not many people do head gaskets on these, which is no, probably not common, or these are reusable. I don't, I wouldn't imagine these would be reusable, but like I said, I, I couldn't find any from, from searching for a good bit. So we're gonna use those and follow the torque sequence that uh, they say in here. It's funny because it must be just a generic way you crank heads down is uh, pretty much the same exact way a Cummins head is torqued down. Same sequence, you know, starting and ending out in the end. So we'll get to work on that. And uh, this, will, this thing's starting to look like an engine, guys. I'll tell you what, it's slowly but surely coming together. Now we have everything torqued down. The first time we ran these bolts down, we just ran them down because the other ones that weren't done yet were stuck up. But it's good to use a paint pen, good practice to know which ones you did because you'd think you wouldn't forget, but you will forget. Now, the only trouble now I'm finding into, running into is this hole in here has a little bit of surface rust in it. So the injector isn't wanting to sit down in there. You can see a little bit of rust in there. So I'll have to find a way to get that all cleaned up. Next up, we got the rocker assembly on here. Uh, the valve lash is all jacked up because it looks like they took these all out to get the push rods out and all this stuff out for some reason. So we're going to go through now, set all the valve lash, everything on here. Spec is 15 to 25, which is, uh, they say for that one, which isn't either of ours, but it's the only one listed in this whole book. So I think that's what we're going to go with. We're gonna take a little break from the inside engine work and now focus on something out here on the actual unit itself. Uh, one thing I wanna do before I forget, cause I know I'll forget and we'll be all excited to put the engine in and then realize that we don't have a battery to start the thing. So came out here, opened this up. This is another piece that's gonna have to get uh, rebent and figure out how to get it back in the square. But I uh, came to get the battery out and I brought one tool with me out here. And this is what I brought. And this is not to uh, tighten any bolts. The reason is I figured this panel would be so bent in I couldn't get the battery out. What I can do with these is since they're Nipex and they kind of clamp and grab, I can grab the panel and move it as I need to. So, but it looks like it's ready to come out of here. So we're going to pop this sucker out of here. Probably clean up our terminals because that's a no bueno. And also one more thing I want to do before this engine goes in is pressure wash this out. Because this is one thing that... You can't access once the engine's in there. It's, you know, it's in, it's done. Now, as much as I want to start pressure washing the rest of this while I'm at it, um, I'm going to tell myself, Mark, hold your horses. Do not do that because, like I said, I've learned until you see this thing run and operate, do not keep putting so much time into it. Um, otherwise, you'll really, really regret it like I did the first time on my forklift. So next step, let's get this battery out of here. That was pretty uneventful and a lot easier than I thought it would be. But I'll tell you what, you start looking around in here, it just makes you anxious. Like, it's like you just wonder, well, where did this go to? Is that important? Uh, what do we got down here? We got the uh, the cable that we actually need. Okay, we at least know that goes to the battery. You're like, okay, that probably goes to the battery. Terminal stayed with it. Um, okay, what's this wire here? Where does this go? What's that do? So just a ton of stupid little stuff that... Uh, Sure, we'll find out the hard way where all this stuff kind of goes. This may have been the end of this Exide battery because we've tried everything. It, it just does not want to take a charge. We even tried shocking it with right now we're on about a 50 amp boost to try and get this thing to, to jump to life here. And then we try and charge it. But when you try and charge it, just that it just doesn't like it. So maybe the end of it getting not really warm, but uh, just not having a charge. Next thing we're tackling is these injectors. Uh, when they grab them, they, it looks like they, they grab the size of them trying to wiggle them out and that created some burrs. So you can see in that area down in there, it's just put a bunch of teeth marks on it. And uh, Jordan's working here on the grinder, trying to get those teeth marks out of it because what has to slip in there is these injector hold down. This is what holds your injector down to the head so the cylinder doesn't just, the cylinder pressure doesn't just push your injector up and away. So these will slide down and uh, bolt right in there so that'll keep, keep everything held in place. So. Just getting this worked away, little tedious things like that. And I'm over here getting this lower gasket, or I guess it'd be the upper oil pan, I guess they'd call it, uh, ready to go for installation.
went together pretty smoothly there actually the upper oil pan as we're calling it not really sure the technical name the actual oil pan and then these are all just motor mounts here we're, some of them were different so we're not going to really get into uh where these bolts go until it's actually ready to be put in the machine because these things look like puzzle pieces to me right now and i'm sure it'll make a lot more sense once it's in there and you can actually see where things line up so things to still go on obviously we got the starter we have the exhaust manifold this will probably go on once it's ready to go into the actual excavator because back here you can see it's all attached to the muffler and everything is one right now and we're not really wanting to separate that if we don't have to water pumping on here the only thing that's given us a little bit of a question mark is this bracket here we're thinking it might go right there not 100 percent sure yet where this thing went at one point in time i'd have to maybe find some pictures of some assembled online we can see injection pump injection lines are all nice and ready to go we got to tighten the injection pump yet to set the timing for it timing will also be done once the uh, flywheel's in there we did the rear main seal right there so uh this thing knock on wood shouldn't have any leaks as we're doing every single seal on this thing from top to bottom but yeah really exciting to see this thing it just keeps taking more and more shape as time goes on back to the outside here we are back at the excavator getting ready to get this thing all clean because pretty soon that engine is going to be going boop, right back into here and you know what's bad and jordan decides his truck needs to be out of the way because this thing is just going to have grease dirt grind flying all over the place i got the cab up wasn't that hard just a little release lever right here and everything just falls forward but anyway when i say this thing is bad it's it's bad so i plugged all my lines that i could these ones were too big i just taped them up uh fuel lines stuff like that this one already had a bolt i use this little cap and uh plug kit that's all red and little caps did that and pretty much got everything out of the way that i could here so we can start blasting away at this thing it's nice i got a nice radiator here to uh get clean and i guess he uh he doesn't trust me either. Hey, what guys? Don't trust me to uh, not spray the vehicles. I want to do this too. This is uh, the final drives. And the reason all these lines are off is because when they couldn't get this to run or when it didn't run, they couldn't get it to move. They wanted to try and move it somehow. And unfortunately, these aren't like the big excavators where you just pull out a sun gear. They're, they're basically just little pumps. So unfortunately, all this stuff got dirt up in it. I tried my best. It was probably like a half hour of going underneath here and trying to you know get dirt out of the lines i don't know what i'm going to do yet with that but uh for now i want to get all this crap but look look how much mud is caked up there like that that goes straight down in the metal that's like two inches of mud we're definitely going to put the old hot pressure washer to the test i've been waiting to use the hot pressure washer I've been waiting to get it for this reason and uh one of many reasons this is one of them so enough talking let's get to work and uh see how bad this gets as you can see I'm trying to gear up here. I got a face shield as well, because I know pressure washing is just gonna be stuff going everywhere. Ultimate test for the pressure washer here, the hot water one. We got this thing cranked up to 250 degrees and uh, it couldn't get any worse in here. And just like that, we have a nice, clean, grease-free unit. You can actually touch and rub against and not just get completely covered in grease. So that hot, hot water pressure washer, that's the first time I used one like this. And uh, it did an amazing, amazing job. So from this angle right here, you can see what it looked like before. And then now you can see what this thing looks like all cleaned up. Same thing from this angle right here. You can see what it, all that grime and dirt and that base portion there that's like you know an inch thick in the corners and now this thing is completely nice and clean like to the point where it's like you sprayed degreaser on it you know you can touch it and you don't have grease on you which is going to be so nice now i did say don't clean your equipment and don't start getting all into it until it runs but in this case you couldn't get down into here afterwards and i also got a little carried away not gonna lie i started doing it up by the swing motor there and all that stuff some of the hoses, but while the cab was up and the engine's out, I figured it was the time to do it. Now down into here, I am extremely impressed with, as if I wasn't impressed on the rest of it, as to how clean it got this stuff. Even these lines, you can actually touch them now, which is amazing. We gotta find a way to get the inside of these clean and then we should be all 
all good to go on that but all the grime and grease that was up into here oh uh, yeah you can see most of it is on me now but all that stuff that was caught up in there all melted away like that hot water is absolutely amazing of uh, what it can really do to, to grease just a little bit of heat also did the track too not necessary but i figured we'll be crawling all over this thing so why not have it nice and clean pump cleaned up really nice too so man I, I couldn't be happier if you guys can't tell i'm ecstatic of how that thing worked it was truly better than i thought it ever would be next step for this thing is going to be getting the motor fully assembled we're about 85 percent of the way there you guys know where we left off i haven't touched it since then but Today had a nice day to do this, so that's why we got this all cleaned up today. Plan is possibly this weekend to be able to get the engine out here and actually into the excavator here. Granted, everything is there, everything is in where it needs to be, and we can figure everything out. No more road bumps like the injection pump. I even tried to clean a nice little area right here because this pad's all muddy. We can't really pressure wash this until the uh, this thing is out of the way. So I gave a little clean area to work in. I'm sure we'll be crawling around there. I mean, everything is muddy at this point. <laughs> Obviously, the hose has got to wind up. But even look at the tripod for the camera. That's why I had to cut that uh, time lapse out because this phone's just getting destroyed. That's what I used, so I didn't want to ruin my only phone. Actually, I'll take you guys up here and show you what the pressure washer is that we decided on. Jordan, tell us about this fine pressure washer you're cleaning up here and fixing up. What do you want to know? Uh, specs on it. GPM, PSI, what do we use to get this thing clean? Um, this unit is 2700 PSI, 2750 I think and then uh, 2.5 gallons per minute we have a cat pump on it which is pretty much the best for the pressure washers we got our diesel tank and our burner and our coil there well the burner is actually underneath but that's the coil and eventually we still got to get her plumbed outside it's kind of it's thinking off. yeah something to go like that we had to take this thing outside because it couldn't just sit inside and fill up the shop with fumes but it's a little work in progress to figure out how this works. I had this thing turned up the whole way to 250. That's the max that it will go. And I'm actually curious how much fuel we use for running it. Well, not much at all. So maybe like an inch or two worth of fuel. And I ran it for about close to an hour, 45 minutes. So pretty good on fuel too. That should last a while. I got a little ahead of myself yesterday. I forgot to film, but we got pretty much the motor fully ready to go. We found out what mounts go where based off of like the little print so you could match on the back here because i didn't clean these like you can match that print right there for example this print right here we matched one actually this guy right here so if you look those little lines right there you can tell used to go right here so when you go to bolt this up you can kind of tell where exactly it's going to go so it's kind of like playing uh blues clues here whatever you want to call it trying to figure out where's waldo and uh, how these all go but everything's good the only thing I had to buy was a belt right here. This belt drives the alternator and the fan will bolt right here. So it's fan, crank, alternator all in one, just tension it up with the alternator. Second uh, pulley system and belt here drives solely the AC compressor right here. Um, this thing is a little bit rough. I don't know much about AC compressors, but I know they are supposed to be somewhat clean. So we'll see if this thing even works, but uh, at least we have the belt on here now. I gotta run this tensioner up after I get this bolted in. It's kind of funny, we can start seeing where things actually were supposed to go this thing took a little bit of finessing to figure out where exactly it went but it, it's there now and that's all that matters before this thing gets picked up and pulled outside the only things left to do are valve lash now valve lash i should say and bolt the fan on but the valve lash can't be done until this motor gets rotated 180 degrees and for that there's actually little marks on the side of this flywheel so you can see these little marks here there's different ones on there i'm not sure what's what yet but that's how you tell where exactly the uh, the marks are for top dead center and vice versa. So we can't really go any farther until this thing's off the stand and we're picking it up and pretty much ready to take it outside and install it into the actual excavator. And with that being said, that means this video is coming to a conclusion. I wanna do it where the first video is assembling this thing, getting it all ready to go. And then the second video after this is going to be on actually installing it into the excavator because I know that will be a feet of nature jordan's taking out the uh little waste oil to uh, suck stuff out of the excavator that'll be in the next video well guys that concludes the first video of going over this thing and getting it all built i'm sure that a lot of things we did along the way weren't right like i said we're learning and we're fully okay with accepting that and that's why i'm hoping you guys along the way have left comments down below as to what we can improve on, thoughts, how we're doing, anything like that. We're, we're open to constructive criticism as always. Now part two of this excavator series is going to take this engine, 
lifting it up, like I said, and throwing it into the forklift. Of course, the uh, compressor has to kick on there. But I don't want to make this a whole long video because I'm sure we will get into a ton of uh, different things that go wrong while putting this into the excavator, and that should be a whole separate video before this is like uh, forever long. So thank you guys so, so very much for watching this. If you did enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up. That helps me out, helps the channel out, and I really do appreciate more, that more than anything. Thanks again, guys, for watching, and we will see you in the next video.